another session where we'll be talking about cron jobs for 2022 and um this session is going to be handled by clement kubetic um clement forgive me if i didn't pronounce that correctly but i hope i did and um, before Clement come off stage to start his um, presentation, I would like to quickly share with us what, who Clement is and why it's important for you to be um, to be listening to this particular session at the moment. So Clement is a DevOps engineer from Slovenia, and um, he's a passionate in um, passionate in computer science. And then um, he started being a computer and, um, scientist when his father bought a work computer when he was at a very young age. He also has a bachelor's of computer and information science and also have different certificates from microsoft aws and rare ad certificates okay is also his career also went from being a system administrator to system engineer and the focus is currently on devops roles okay he has been working with multi since version 2 and um for roughly two years he has taken um, he has tasks as installing and maintaining multi installations. Most of his free time is occupied by two small daughters, but he finds time to watch a Formula One race or a Manchester United game. He's a big fan of good pizza with a good beer. All right, Clement, welcome and um, good to have you here. Hi, yeah, thanks for joining this session. Yeah, it's a pleasure right. for me as well. So. All right, perfect, perfect. So can you share your screen so that you can begin? Uh, Hi, my name is Clement and I come from a company called Smart Octopus Solutions. Today, I would like to talk about a different way of implementing Mautic cron jobs. So let's start with a little bit about me. I come from Ljubljana, Slovenia, and I'm old enough that my first computer was a Pentium with 166 MHz. I'm a Bachelor of Computer and Information Science. I love open source software, and I have been working with Azure, AWS platforms, also with various Red Hat solutions, and I also have some certification. I'm a DevOps engineer by profession, but I have been working also in other areas. I'm using Mautic now for two years, so I have some experience. For all of you who are taking notes, don't worry, all of this material is available in this GitHub repository. If you, hear, if you have any technical questions, feel free to reach out to me or to our marketing and other department. Both emails are available on this slide. Let's start with a little bit about our company. We are based in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Our central team is identification supported with software solutions as its pillar. We help you identify, solve and understand problems concerning all kinds of identification and offer support with software solutions in different industry fields. We are in Mautic development for almost three years now. We got to know Mautic on a local meetup. One of our biggest projects in Mautic is integrating loyalty program in Mautic for the biggest spa and wellness center in Slovenia. We are using core Mautic functionalities like emails, points, contacts, segments and campaigns. There are 160,000 contacts and segments and emails are refreshing all the time. We have built a custom plug plugin for the loyalty part. We had a lot of issues with sending of emails and segmentation. Basic, which is basically a cron job functionality. So we had to came up with a different approach. Let's start with a little bit our hardware. Our hardware is basically virtual. Our virtual machines are home in the AWS cloud. They are mainly T3A medium instances that have two virtual CPUs and four gigabytes of RAM. We also have some on-premise solutions, which, which are on K KVM systems on our G8 HP servers. Virtual machines usually have two vCPUs or four or eight gigabytes RAM of RAM, depending on the load. Usually 100 gigabytes of disk is enough. Our clients mainly use VMW, VMware for virtualization, which is not a problem. 
For our operating system, we mainly use Ubuntu. We would love to say that we don't use Ubuntu 18 anymore, but we still have some. We primarily use Ubuntu 20 and we are testing Ubuntu 22. Many will say, why don't, use, why don't you use containers? The answer is, we are not there yet. And we are not there yet because there is no need. There is no push from customer side and there is no push from our side. If our customers mainly use VMware virtualization, then this means that we will just need to install a, a Docker on a virtual machine. Is that really necessary? But let's leave this question open for next time. Let's now try to explain what our pain was. So our biggest pain was that multitasks tasks are executed by cron jobs. And cron jobs are executed in a certain manner. They're executed at a certain time. For us, that meant that segments were not updating frequent enough, that emails were not sent frequent enough, and our customers were not satisfied. For us, technically, it also meant that we had no good way of stopping cron jobs programmatically. We also had no good way of doing anything with our cron jobs. We had to write bash scripts for doing everything. The problem started if when you start reading cron job documentation on Mautic. It says that you need to install at least three cron jobs that are run on certain periods. They are run every 15 minutes and they, are try, and they try not to overlap them. For us, this was not acceptable. Our clients demanded that our response was quicker. So for starters, let's just say that we said increase the numbers. So if we go to extreme edges, we said, OK, run segments update every minute, segments trigger every three minutes, which means that we just increased the numbers where when these tasks were executed. Was that better? Well, sort of, yes, it was executed sooner. But was it correct? No. This meant that multiple tasks, and there are many more, were executed sooner but they were over overlapping themselves which meant that before we start when this when we started with execution maybe the previous service was still being ran and maybe the previous of the previous one was still in action as well and we had no way of knowing this so this was not an acceptable solution for us so the problem was still there was still there we had too many overlapping executions, so this means that cron jobs were executing too frequent, and we were still no better at stopping and starting these cron jobs that we needed for maintenance. So this was not really a solution. So we turned to systemd. Systemd is primarily a system and service manager. You, you might be familiar if you look at the example section, which we can say it's, it says, systemctl start my app dot service or stop or status you might be using it and you don't know so when running these services you're using systemd systemd is a default service manager from ubuntu 16 and upwards it replaces systemint and upstart timers are a part of systemd timers are basically a file a systemd unit file whose name ends in dot timer they control that service file or events. Timers can be, well, no, timers are used as an alternative to cron. Let's see how in newer operating systems, cron jobs are replaced by timers. If you want to read more, more specific or in detail about systemd and also timers, here are a few links that you can check by yourself. But for the means of this presentation, We'll just look at some basic functionalities. We'll take Ubuntu 20 and LogRotate as an example where LogRotate was replaced by timers. In, newer, in older versions, you had a file in the folder called ecetc cron.daily. There was a file called LogRotate that was executed daily and it LogRotated your files, which is all fine, it worked well. Then maybe a question, what if you need 
Laggard date to run more fre frequent. Well, you had to make some configuration changes because by default it was just ran daily. So in newer versions of Ubuntu, you can see on the first screenshot, on the first section of code, you can see a line where it checks if uh, there's a folder called run systemd system. If this folder exists, then this bash script exits, which means that this file never gets executed. But then how are the log rotate how, are log rotate, how does log rotate work? How are files log rotated? Well, there's a timer. You can do systemctl list timers, grab log rotate, and you will see that the log rotate timer exists. You can also do systemctl status log rotate.service or log rotate.timer, and you will see that it outputs the last run of log rotate, the next run of log rotate, and other important information. But for us, it gave us an idea. Could we implement our cron jobs as a timer? Surely it would work. So we started with a service file. In a folder called etc systemd system, we created a file called motic underscore segment underscore update dot service. There are various ways of creating this file, but creating a file on file system is also good enough. Let's take a quick look what's inside of this file. So there's the unit description, which is basically for your information. And there, there's the type. In this case, type is one shot, which means that this service, this bash script that is being executed will only run once. So it's not something that will run continuously or run multiple times, but that's okay because we'll use timers. There's also a user and a group, which in our case is www-data. If it's different in your case, then you can of course replace this. We also have standard error and standard output logging, which is handy if you want to output the logs to a file. These are the logs of the script that you're executing. Uh, in newer operating system, journal CTL takes care of this. If for some reason you want to use a file, then you can also do it. And last but not least, the important line is exec start. This is basically the line where we say, please execute this script. The second one is the timer file. So in the same folder, etc systemd system, we created the file called mautic underscore segment underscore update dot timer. The file matches the name of the service except for the ending. In service, it ends with dot .service and in timer, in case of timer, it ends with dot .timer. Let's again review the content of this file. We also start with unit description, which is, which is basically for our information, and then we start with configuration. The most important thing here is on unit inactive sec parameter. In our case, it is set to 30 seconds. What does that mean? This means if you go to through systemd documentation, this means that when the previous run of our timer, so our bash script ended, wait 30 seconds and then repeat. Why is this important? In our case, it was important because in Chrome, there's no awareness of stopping and starting the job. It's just a matter of time. If the time is correct, please execute. But we are not sure if the previous script really ended. It might not have. So in this case, systemd knows how to check if the previous run is still being run. So let's say we have a big operation that lasted for 10 minutes and systemd will know that and for 10 minutes, this service, our best script, will not rerun. But let's say we don't have a lot of operation and our best script, our segment update or anything else, ended in 10 seconds. So systemd will adapt to that. You will make sure that the only thing that matters is a 30 second interval between running the script. For us, this quickened how we were able to 
work with segment update, with emails, and any other task that Mautic needs. Now, now let's review the content of our bash script. A file called Mautic underscore segments underscore update dot sh lives in a folder called USR local bin. Remember, when you create this file, you need to add execute privileges and the owner needs to be correct. This all corresponds to our service file that we created earlier. The content of this bash script is rather simple. It's only a bin bash prefix with our console command that will execute some Mautic task. When you create all this file, remember to, to execute the command systemctl daemon reload. Without doing this, the systemd will not pick up the new changes that, that you created on the file system. As we mentioned, there are various other ways where you can create uh, systemctl files like service file or even timers, but for the sake of simplicity, we just shown how to create it on the file system. So remember, systemctl daemon reload. And then when you do systemctl list timers, and let's say grab for Mautic, you can see, as it's shown on this picture, that our timer was already picked up. On this output, you can see when was the last time when this timer was ran, and you can also see when's the next time, so how many seconds before we start the next sequence. For us, this worked perfectly, and it's still working. The question here is, is it better? Is it the best? Well, we would say that when running Mautic locally on a virtual machine or a physical server for that matter, that's a good or really the best price performance ratio. So what are the advantages here? For us, the biggest one was that we got serial execution. So we, do, we did not need to take care of how much time the previous task will run or might run. We just need to know, we just told systemd, when it's over, wait a little bit and then start again. As for the technical side, we also got the ability to start and stop programmatically. So for us, it was really important when you do our maintenance, we needed to make sure that we are not running any uh, Mautic tasks because we don't know in which state of, in which state our code is currently at. Maybe database migrations are still running, so we, we for sure don't want any type, any cron jobs to run any Mautic commands. So by using timers, we are able to programmatically and rather easy stop the timers, which makes sure that the scripts are not being ran. We can also then, when we do our maintenance, we can start the timers, which then make sure that our scripts are being ran again. So for us, this, when we are not in the container world, this is a good solution. We increased our campaigns update, we increased our frequency of emails being sent, and our customers were more, more, were and more, are more satisfied. And now there's the question sections. If you want, to not, today with you, we are Clement Kubitic and Tomasz Juric, and we will try to answer all of your technical as well as questions related to the company. Thank you for joining us, and now let's go to the questions. Okay, all right. So, Clement, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was muted and I was talking. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that. All right. So, quickly, we want to jump in into questions. But first, I would like to ask you, okay, um, how did the CPU usage change when you do this? So, in comparison to when you're using just uh, Chrome D, so like a periodic schedule, when you are running your uh, your tasks, of course it increased, but it increased because you are just running more tasks more frequent, uh, which also means that you are doing more uh, more job more tasks, uh, with out of which you have more benefit, of course. So yeah, so the CPU usage increased, 
as much as the satisfaction of our customers. So, um, like in percentage, I would say that the biggest increase is like uh, in terms of average CPU consumption. So before you had spikes whenever the Chrome tasks uh, started, and now the CPU consumption is average throughout the uh, throughout the time because basically okay. Chrome jobs are being run constantly. So that's the that's the increase. Uh, if you want an answer, so for how much it increases, it basically depends on how how intensively you are using Mautic. Uh, so what what are the tasks that are being run in these cron jobs or in timers actually doing? If they are sending emails or doing some other stuff, then of course the CPU usage increases. Um, and if they're just checking stuff, then it doesn't increase so much. All right, thank you so much. So if you have any question, please feel free to drop it in the question and answer um, section, and then um, I'm going to help you ask them from um, Clement. And if you'd like to raise up your hand to ask the question directly yourself, please feel free to also do that. All right, so Clement, let me also ask you about timers. Are they available in all Linux operating systems? Huh. So timers are a part of system D, basically. Uh, so when you use let's say modern modern general operating system like ubuntu fedora red hat enterprise linux uh, operating systems that are meant for general usage uh, they already come bundled with systemd uh, but when you use lightweight operating systems like maybe alpine operating system then this the systemd doesn't come prepackaged with it so in that in this case you have to either install it manually or go for some other solution all right okay all right great so one more question from my hand are there any improvements that are possible with this well so we were thinking and we we're testing a little bit that uh, when you when you are using system timers uh, or when, when you're using system d uh, you can also you can also specify how certain timers or services are related one to, each one to each other. So you can do like dependencies. So, so in our use case, we can say, uh, don't, stop the, don't start this timer before a certain previous timer stops. So let's say we can wait for the segments to be updated and then we can start, and then the timer for email sending can wait and start just then. So that's sort of an improvement that can be still done here. So, and it's something that cannot be done with Chrome or it cannot be done easily. So it would involve a lot of bash programming there. And here it's basically just one line or one parameter in the uh, timer file. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Clement, for this wonderful session. No problem. Today. Okay. And, um, I'm really, really excited about the topic. And um, I know a lot of people will still come back to watch the session and also be able to take their time, pause, check again, go back, and then so that they can be able to implement and use this on their own end too. All right, so that will be all from me now. Okay, so while we prepare for our next session, I would like to thank you and also end this session now. Thank you so much for your time, Clement. Thank you as well. And thank you for joining us. Okay, bye.